my mic on. There we go. I'm Pastor Ruth Sears. I want you to know who I am. Uh, I'm a retired ELCA pastor, um, and I live here in Springfield, and I'm delighted to be here this evening, as we all are, because it's just a totally different climate right now, and that's just a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, so you can see the announcements. They're green this week. Uh, and uh, note the things that are important there. I'm also told to invite people to fill out the welcome card and leave it in the offering plate. I guess the welcome card is on your... somewhere. <laughs> Find a welcome card and fill it. They're okay, they're at the back. And then please leave that because uh, that way we can... Uh, we don't like to lose people, so that way we can uh, continue to have you here. Um, so we are ready to begin our worship. Please rise if you're able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who gathers us, gathers us in the wilderness to redeem us, anoint us, and make us anew. Amen. In these 40 days, let us be honest, confess our sin, and receive God's promise of mercy. God at the margins. We have wandered far from your home. Again and again, we lose our way. We turn inward, afraid of the world around us. We forget you have saved your people before and promise to do so again. Do not remember the deeds of our past, but turn our faces toward the future, where your forgiveness is sure, your welcome is clear, and your love overflows. Amen. Like a hen who gathers her chicks, God embraces you in tender care. Like manna in the desert, God feeds you with surprising mercy. Like a loving parent, God runs to meet you again this day, forgiving your sins for the sake of Christ, leading you from death into life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share the gift of peace.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. God of the covenant, in the mystery of the cross, you promise everlasting life to the world. Gather all peoples into your arms and shelter us with your mercy, that we may rejoice in the life we share in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. First lesson tonight comes from the book of Genesis, the 15th chapter. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no offspring, so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him. The man shall not be your heir, no one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look toward the heaven and count the stars, if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. Then he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you from Ur of the Chaldeans, to give you this land to possess. But he said, O Lord, God, how am I to know that I shall possess it? He said to him, Bring me a heifer three years old, a female goat three years old, a ram three years old, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. He brought him all these and cut them in two, laying each half over against the other. But he did not cut the birds in two. And when birds of prey came down on the carcasses, Abram drove them away. As the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and a deep and terrifying darkness descended upon him. When the sun had gone down and it was dark, a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch passed between the pieces. On that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your descendants I give this land from the river of Egypt, to the great river of the Euphrates. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please read responsively Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers close in against me to devour my flesh, they, my foes and my enemies, will stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart will not fear. Though war rise up against me, my trust will not be shaken. One thing I ask of the Lord, one thing I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek God in the temple. For in the day of trouble, God will give me shelter, hide me in the hidden places of the sanctuary, and raise me up high upon a rock. Even now my head is lifted up above my enemies who surround me. Therefore I will offer sacrifice in the sanctuary. Sacrifices of rejoicing I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice, O Lord, when I call. Have mercy on me and answer me. My heart speaks your message. Seek my face. Your face, O Lord, I will seek. Hide not your face from me. Do not turn away from your servant in anger. Cast me not away. You have been my helper. Forsake me not, O God, of my salvation. Though my father and my mother forsake me, the Lord will take me in. Teach me your way, O Lord. Lead me on a level path because of my oppressors. Subject me not to the will of my foes, for they rise up against me, false witnesses breathing violence. This I believe, that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord and be strong. 
Take heart and wait for the Lord. The second lesson comes to us from Philippians, the third chapter. Brothers and sisters, join in imitating me and observe those who live according to the example you have in us. For many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. I have often told you of them, and now I tell you even with tears. Their end is destruction, their God is the belly, and their glory is in their shame. Their minds are set on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven, and it is from there that we are expecting a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humiliation that it may be conformed to the body of his glory by the power that also enables him to make all things subject to himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters whom I love and longing for, my joy and my crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of the Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 13th chapter. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to Jesus, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, Go and tell that fox for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day I must be on my way because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you. And I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. A reading from God's Word. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. May God add a blessing to the reading, to the hearing, and to the preaching of God's word. Let us say amen. I grew up in one church in New Jersey for most of my life until the end of high school. It was a smallish church, but it was really committed to a choir. My father was a chemical and mathematical engineer, but music was an intense and passionate hobby of his, and so hence he was the choir director all the while that we were members of that church. So his responsibility was, of course, choir rehearsals, directing the choir on Sunday mornings, paying attention to the church year, and particularly his job was to be choosing the music to sing. And he was very dedicated to try to choose music that matched or enhanced the themes for that Sunday from the Bible. And that choosing of the music is the part that I want to talk about today because I have these memories from Monday nights. Um, and I guess, I don't know where he got the music, but I guess when you, even then, you get on the mailing list of a choir director and stuff. Having been the pastor of small churches, I know stuff comes in all the time. So maybe he got a lot of stuff. But anyway, these are my memories of Monday nights. They're memories of he and my mom playing the piano downstairs. Now, both of my parents were very good singers, Piano playing, not so much. 
I think my mother had had some lessons because her mom, my grandmother, was actually a piano teacher and I still have her metronome. It's very cool. But in any case, I think my mother had had some piano lessons and she was decent as a piano player. And my father had a great ear and he was smart and he was a good musician, but playing the piano? Nah. <laughs> They would be off tempo because, you know, she'd be doing the top two parts and he'd be doing the piano, the bottom two hearts, parts. If you see this in a concert, it's called Piano Forehands. It was just my parents playing SATB, that's all it was. And so they would have a little bit of trouble coordinating because she would probably find the notes a little faster than he did. And so they'd be off a tempo and they'd be trying to figure out the key of the music according to the score. When they were sight singing, they were excellent at that and they could figure that out just fine. But uh, doing this, reading it off the music was more difficult. So they'd be testing and learning the mu new music and trying to see if the music would be manageable for the choir. That's very, very old school because, you know, I'd say now uh, music comes on CDs, but, you know, now musicians just download music from iTunes, watch it on YouTube, or I don't know, I'm not a musician, but I know that that's a way that music can be learned, and you didn't need to know anything, you don't need to know anything about the piano now. But that's what they would be working on every Monday night. And there would be hard pieces of music that they would work on. And they were very memorable to me because they would play those pieces over and over. And my bedroom was right over the rec room where the piano was. You know, remember rec rooms? Some of you remember rec rooms. So anyway, there was the rec room. That's where the piano was. It didn't get wrecked. So I was very familiar with their uh, struggle with learning this music. And today's lesson reminds me about, very specifically, of one piece that they worked on for ages. And he watching over Israel slumbers not nor sleeps. And then it went on and on and on. But you see, I remember it very well. 55 years later, that anthem is still in my brain. But I wanted to tell that story because that sentence that I hope, and that anthem that I hope you all remember now as well, he watching over Israel slumbers not nor sleeps. That really summarizes all of the lessons that we have today. Last week, the lessons were all about how God cares about us as individuals. Jesus called several individuals, Simon Peter, James, and John, to be his followers and to fish for people. A choir song for that might have been, All night, all day, angels watching over me, my Lord, to give us the idea that God might pick one of us up and float us around so that we did not so much as trip over one little stone. But today, we are reminded in this moving and wistful, beautiful, personal statement of Jesus that God cares about us as a group. Jerusalem. Jerusalem, how often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wing? You can tell that even though I have only one child, that's something that I really relate to a lot. We can hear in these words that Jesus cares not just about individuals, but about our whole family, our whole church, our whole race, our whole country. And here Jesus clearly here, because we're hearing here not just about our whole everything, but God cares about all families, about all churches, about all races. God cares about all countries. And that's a good thing, too, because think of the care that is needed right now by the people of New Zealand. Think of the care that is needed right now by the people who are being flooded out in states north of us and west of us, maybe even east of us. Think right now of the care that is needed by young people without privilege or prosperity who are trying to get access to a good education while others bribe their way into colleges. Think of the people right now who need God's care because their crops have been ruined by weather conditions or their livestock have been killed by conditions which, of course, they cannot control. God's care is needed by all and far more than we could possibly even mention if we sat here till midnight. We may all 
be somewhat individualistic and self-centered. I've been told I'm that way every so often, and it's probably true because we are Americans, and we're taught to be that way to a good degree. Sure, we personally want to stay alive, but we also want our group to stay alive. We are committed to our families, our church, our neighborhood community, our country. And God is clearly interested in the well-being and care for the group as well. A few years ago now, there was a meteor in Russia. And people actually got pictures of it. It was so bright that, you know, they, I mean, people had dash cams or something. But people got pictures of this. I remember seeing this during the day. Here's this meteor, and there it's going through the air. There were broken windows, the sound of an explosion. It was pretty spectacular. And that, after, you know, in the next month or so, that brought up those fears of extinction. The fear of the next meteor, the end of the world as we know it, or at least the end of Russia. Now, 40 years ago, and some of you may remember this, 40 years ago when we were all supposed to hate communism, well, yeah, most of us who are younger, that's, that is true. For those of you who think that's a little crazy. But, you know, we might have thought that was a good thing 40 years ago, but nowadays, no. We don't want to have any country be destroyed. But think about what has happened instead. Truly, to think about no future for our group, for humans, that is a fearsome thing. And more and more news about climate change has reminded us that perhaps what we need to fear is not some external threat, a meteor, Earth going off its whatever, the path here, the earth going off its track or whatever. Perhaps it's not so much those things we need to fear, a meteor, a volcano, an earthquake, but our own lifestyle as the biggest threat to our own future. We hear about the end of civilization as we know it. And I know if you're like me, I take lots of pictures because I want to save the moments because I think sometimes, well, who knows how much longer this is going to last. There's concerns, and they've been going on for a while, that the United States is in decline. It's no longer the greatest country in the world. There are things to worry about. But you know, I'm sorry to say, people, this stuff is not new. The psalm for today, Psalm 27, names those fears from over 2,000 years ago. Fear of who we think are our enemies. Who are the evildoers? Who is bearing false witness? Where is their war coming in and encroaching? And fear even of people trying to help us. I saw this firsthand in my recent work in the past years in a high school. There were so many students that were treasured and valued, that there were so many students that treasured and valued the commitment the staff had made to them, and many staff treated the students as well as they treated their own children, even taking them into their own homes. But there were also students sassing the teachers, sassing the coach, giving some lip to the principal, showing no respect to the people who were trying to help them. And I'm sure that didn't only happen in Connecticut. I'm sure it happens in other places as well. Jesus said it, killing the prophets, stoning those who are sent. What was Jesus' reaction? Psst. Well, whatever. Forget you. Of course not. What did Jesus say? How often I have desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. Of course Jesus cares about groups as well as individuals. God watching over Israel slumbers not nor sleeps. And we can adapt that for ourselves right now. God watching over Messiah Lutheran slumbers not nor sleeps. This time of year, 
when it goes from like 26 degrees early in the morning to 59 degrees, you know if you're out there early in the morning that if you saw birds at all in the past week, the birds are all fluffed up against the cold. They're like those really fluffy comforters that you want to buy one every, I want to buy one every time I see one in the catalog. The birds are all fluffed up to keep themselves warm. This time of year we also see, I see, wild turkeys. <laughs> when I lived in Connecticut, even on my way driving a few minutes to the church I served in the inner city, I drove past parkland near a small river, and I could see flocks of wild turkeys, and even baby turkeys. So, of course, if chicklets are little chicks, then the little baby turkeys must have been called turklets. <laughs> Thank you! <laughs> I told that one to my mother, and she was like, what? <laughs> turklets, you know, they're little baby turkeys. But you know, you'd see five or seven or eight turkeys, and then there would be these little, little turkeys, and you could just imagine what it is, that somehow, at some point, they had to keep them all together, because there was a big, fast road going by, and me and a lot of other people were on that big, fast road. And here in Missouri, just on Friday, I was biking the Frisco Trail to Willard. I bundled up, and it was, it was, the sun was shining. I saw a beautiful golden field with a flock of turkeys out there. The turkeys were all fluffed up. They're practicing their mating rituals, I think, and they're also staying warm against the cold. They're practicing to gather their brood under their wing to keep them warm and safe. God wants to care for us in that same way. God wants to care for our family, our church, our neighborhood. God is just wrapping us all up in God's holy wings. God watching over Israel. God watching over Messiah Lutheran. God watching over us slumbers not nor sleeps. God will do God's job. And so, since we are the people God is caring about, we're a bunch of little chickies all wrapped up warm and snug. So, what's our job? Well, you know, we can't be pecking at each other. We can't be pushing others out in the cold. And in fact, our job is to find more cold little chickies, more, little, more people in need, more people who are lonely or sick or lost, marginalized, addicted, discouraged, and depressed. Our job is to find those people and to get them in here where it is warm and cozy, and they too are taken care of. This weekend, maybe today if they're here, this weekend Messiah will be reaching, receiving new members. And so that's exactly what we are doing. We just keep going and doing more of the same. Because when we are together, safe and warm and protected as a family, as this group called Messiah Lutheran, as God's people together, that's when amazing things start to happen. They have happened here before, and they will continue to happen. And so, because we know this, we trust this, we can speak these words by faith, let's speak together the final words of the psalm. You can just repeat them after me. The Lord is our light and our salvation. The Lord is our light and our salvation. Whom then shall we fear? Whom then shall we fear? The Lord is the stronghold of our life. Of whom then shall we be afraid?
Messiah is having the blessing of welcoming new members to come under God's wings. And if there's anyone present who is to be part of that this evening, I invite you to come forward. So I would like to ask then that uh, everyone here uh, please pray tomorrow for the new members who will be joining at the other worship services. And um, I don't know how their names are shared, but uh, I would say that as the, because it's always important to feel welcome in the family, um, that it is really the challenge for me and all of us to uh, be sure that we find people and welcome them and encourage them to be part of the church family because they have made the initiative and the commitment to do that. And we are all in that part of that and helping each other together. Let us then stand as able to gather our prayers together in the prayers of the church. Seeking the grace, mercy, and love of Almighty God, we offer our prayers for the church, for people in need, and for all of creation. Compassionate God, call your people to stand firm as citizens of heaven, as we are humbled by your wondrous love. Nurture such mercy in our hearts and ministries. Hear us, O God. Display your faithfulness to creation in the changing of the seasons. Orchestrate the great song of praise that comes from rivers, birds, mountains, livestock, and wind. Hear us, O God. Drown out the terror in the world with acts of loving kindness and generosity. Release political leaders from fry, pride and fear to act justly and to serve citizens. Hear us, O God. Rush to answer those who cry out for you in time of trial, especially Joseph Henson, Margaret Elder, and Luke Umland. Give shelter to your vulnerable children and cover them in the comfort of your mothering wings. Hear us, O God. Grant solace to people who long to be parents but have difficulty in bearing or adopting children. Build life-giving parent and child relationships for the sake of all. Hear us, O God. With thanksgiving, we remember those who have died, especially Joseph Henson and David Hopper. Inspire us by their example and bring us with them into the eternal light of your presence. Hear us, O oh God. Build up your holy community of saints through the work of bishops and missionaries, like Patrick, whom we are commemorating this weekend. Spread your word through your people for the sake of the world. Hear us, O oh God. Reveal your will as you receive our prayers and conform our ways to your ways through the saving work of Jesus Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and good that we should everywhere and always offer thanks and praise to you, holy God, mighty and immortal, through Christ our Lord. You bid us return to you and be renewed, that your justice may shine like the sun and the poor of the earth be lifted up. Blessed are you, holy God, the first and the last, life's beginning and its end. You called us to live as your people, 
you promised to be our God. When time and again we failed to trust your promise and refused to walk in your ways, you sent your word made flesh, the root and offspring of David, to dwell among us and draw us back to you. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Send now your Holy Spirit upon these gifts and all who share this meal. By your Spirit, wipe away all tears and mend with mercy what sin has torn, that we might await Christ's coming with glad and joyful hearts and at last feast forever at the supper of the Lamb. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Christ has prepared the feast. Come to the table where all are welcomed home.
The presence and body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Tender and merciful one, at your feet you fed us who brought nothing, turning our emptiness into joy. Filled with your abundant grace, send us now to be ministers of reconciliation, mending broken hearts, working for justice, and striving for peace among all people in the name of Jesus Christ. God who fills the creation with abundance, Christ who spreads his arm in for, arms in forgiveness, Holy Spirit who draws ever near to us, bless you and bring you to life everlasting. Amen. Guided by the gospel, we welcome all to worship, make disciples, hunger for ministry, nurture youth, gather resources for growing ministries, and offer healing and care to all in need. Go in peace, remember the poor, 